basically what I'm going to be doing is replacing not only the fork seals or the dust seals on my forks, but installing extended forks, which are six inches longer than the stock length. You can see I've got a really nasty leak going on right here. Both sides actually, it's pretty bad. I'm betting there's not much fluid left in there. So let's get started. These are a few of the tools you're going to need to replace your fork seals, your fork bushings, or if you're going to put on extended forks, this is pretty much all you're going to need to accomplish the task. And a tasty beverage. Gross. That's not good, not good for anyone. So one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is get your jack underneath the bike. I have a flat jack here. We're not gonna lift the bike up, but we're gonna get it real close. So just set it up right there. If you don't have a flat jack, you can use a car jack, which pretty much everybody has. You put it up underneath the right side of the frame rail and you go up just a little bit. When you're with your kickstand down, you're gonna create a tripod between the car jack, the kickstand, the rear tire. That's gonna allow the bike to come up far enough for you to get your front wheel off and your forks off. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove your brake caliper and your speedometer sensor. Now, I don't have a speedometer sensor on mine because basically the theory is if it came with the bike, I don't want it. So that's gone, but if you do have one, just a Phillips screw back here, you're gonna unscrew and pull the sensor right out. You can let that hang, no problem. Next, we're gonna use a 12 millimeter socket and a ratchet to remove these two bolts. They're the only two bolts you gotta remove. Just gonna break them loose here. And to save time, one of these puppies. Do not use this to drive a spark plug into a Triumph motor. There's absolutely no story behind that. Flex it back and forth a little bit, get those pads open and pull it off the disc. So I put a zip tie right here through the caliper so we can hang it up off the frame. It doesn't matter really where you hang it, just so long as it's not hanging by this. Also, all the weight should be supported by the zip tie. So I'll just hang it up here on the frame. There we go. Out of the way. Now, before you begin this step, you're gonna like make sure, wanna make sure you have a cold beverage because this is crucial, very crucial. See you. Mm. You take a sip and then you're gonna loosen your fork caps. It's very important. So the reason you wanna loosen these while they're still on the bike, just loosen them, don't take them off. They're held in the, in the clamps right now. It's a lot easier to do that than try to hold this thing or put it in a vise somehow or scratch up your fork tubes. If you're gonna reuse your stock fork tubes, you don't wanna scratch those or ruin them. Just wanna get those loose so when you go to the bench, it's not a nightmare. Make sure they're turning easily. Yep, nice and easy on that one. Nice and easy there. Cool, on the next thing. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do on this wonderful riverboat journey is just loosen up your top clamp, top clamp here and your bottom clamp. It's an eight millimeter Allen and that's a six. So got those right here. Take our eight millimeter, break that one loose. And up at the top, six millimeter, same thing. And you're gonna repeat that process on the other side, both times. And now you gotta take off these little guys. On both sides, you've got two pinch bolts at the bottom of your forks. Six millimeter Allen on a ratchet. Break them loose, both sides, and back them out a little ways. That's pretty loose. You don't have to take them out completely, not necessary. Do the same process for the other side. So sometimes <clears throat> you'll come across little parts on these bikes, like this guy here, which is a bolt, that are gorilla on there. Someone just cranked the crap out of it, not paying attention to torque values at all. So I am now gonna have to channel my inner Conan and rip this thing off. I know drinking on this thing is so weird, right? Nobody drinks beer anymore. All right, let's see here, going that way. Breaker bars help a lot. <clears throat> so on the other side, I've got just this crap screwdriver I've had it's broken, but I keep it for this purpose. Put it through the holes on the other side of the axle to hold it steady. 
and fire away. That's how you do it. Basically, once you've got that loose, you're going to pull this guy out. This is what holds the whole axle in. There you go. On to the next thing. So the next thing you're going to want to do here is uh, lift the bike up so you get the front tire off the ground. It's going to allow you to actually get the tire off the forks. So we're just going to take this guy, lift it up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that tire there. It's coming up off the uh, lift. A little more. Uh, back it off just a smidge. A little more. A little more. Just a tad. Tippy tip. That's about good. You want to take the pressure off the tire so when you push the axle out, you don't have pressure from the bike pushing on it and you don't have the, the, tie, the wheel itself pushing down on the axle. Makes it easier. So now I've got this nice piece of steel here, which is uh, basically used as a drift to push that axle out. And I have this handy dandy S-swing hammer that's going to help me do that job because using your head on this thing is not good. Axle goes through pretty easy as long as you've got the pressure taken off like we did with the jack over there. Kind of wiggle the tire a bit and pull your axle out. Ta-da! It's all greasy and gooey. So now when you pull the wheel out, you're gonna have a spacer on one side over here and your speedo hub on this side. Now, if you're super lazy, you can just pull the wheel out and let the you know, spacers and speedo hub fall all over the place. Um, I really don't like chasing parts over the floor, so I take some zip ties, put it through the wheel like that. <clears throat> get your third one on this side. You're just your basic eight, 10 inch zip ties you get at Home Depot, nothing crazy special. You can get the SpaceX grade ones, which are pretty badass, but you don't really need that. Interesting fact, ti uh, zip ties stand for, the TI is titanium, zip tie. They're super strong, super strong. Pull that wheel out, there you go. Now to remove the forks. Sweat of my balls, it's hot in here. Next thing we're gonna do is actually loosen the clamps completely and pull the forks out both sides. So hold the fork, cause you don't want it to fall. It's pretty loose. Always helps to have a friend around to hold the fork steady for you. If you don't, it's not a big deal. You can always push them to full lock if need be, but See, I've loosened that up enough. We're already sliding out here. Keep an eye on that. What's up, Rob? Oh, you want to hold that for me? Just hold that side. Thank you. Thank you. Hold steady. It's my friend, Rob. All right. Yes. Rob is not a total dickweed and can lend a hand when need be. Next little step. We got this eight millimeter on this side. Oop, wrong one. You got that steady? Cool. I just don't want it sliding out on you. And the six millimeter up top. There we go. It's loose. Go ahead and pull that out. You can turn it a little bit, turn the uh, forks a little bit so we don't run into that. There you go. Perfect. It's so easy. It is. It's greasy too. Your hands are fucked now. You have herpes. Have a great day. All right. Now we're going to head over to the bench. Aria ready. So if you don't have one of these nice T-handle wrenches and you've got a set of these, most people have these sitting around their home, not the T-handle, this guy. <clears throat> these are pretty hard to break loose, the, the, uh, the bolt that's in here. So the easiest thing to do is put your Allen in there and get a breaker bar. Put it on the end and crank it open. Don't have to do that today, so we'll use our T-handle wrench and break it free. Here you go. And on to the next step. Next step is we're going to remove the fork cap completely. Now, remember, there's a spring inside here, and if you're not careful, this thing's going to go and shoot all that stuff all over your shop, oil and fork cap underneath the bench, whatever. So put some pressure on the top of it. There you go. 
Now I'm really surprised to see if there's actually any fluid in here because it's been leaking for so long. This fluid is like black. See how black that is? That's really bad. This has never been changed. This is your stock spacer. Um, side note here, if you ever want to lower your front, your front end, your forks, you can pull this spacer out and replace it with a piece of PVC. So <clears throat> you can just cut a piece of PVC half this length for both sides of your forks, make sure the same length, put it back in, your front end will be lower. Easy modification. So if you let this go down, you can get your little washer out, and there's a spring. And it's a pretty disgusting spring too, so I'm going to get a towel here. Pull this out. Ooh, yuck. So I'll put the spring here on some towels I prepared to absorb the disgusting oily mess. And over here, I'm going to dump all this fork fluid out. What's left of it? Oh, there's something in there. Look at that. Now you're going to pump the forks back and forth to get all of it out. Oh, it sounds so... That's just unsexual and rude. <laughs> oh, let's just do this all day. I'm just kidding. <laughs> get all that fork fluid out of there. Ugh. That's not nearly enough fluid to be in a fork, to be honest with you. That's pretty pathetic. Um, hopefully the rest of the internals of these are not destroyed. So, on to the next thing. So, <clears throat> next step here, um, I've got one of my fork removal tools. I made this because they're the, there's a Honda tool apparently to do this whole process but I couldn't find it for all the tea in China. So super affordable tool, really handy. This is gonna go in and hold the fork damper while you unscrew that little nut on the end all the way. Slide this in here. Be able to find the bolt in there. It's not nearly like a hot dog in a hallway. There we go. And uh, it was 24, yeah, 24 millimeter socket. Um, you don't really need an extension yet. I'm putting on extended forks though, so I will need this in the future. Where did my ratchet go? Over here. Okay. 24 millimeter, <clears throat> you're gonna hold this one. You're gonna take your six millimeter T-handle wrench again. Hold that little Allen bolt at the end. And this is gonna hold everything and you can just unscrew that little guy. Now there may be some fluid that comes out of there. We got a lot of fluid out earlier, but there's usually some residue. So once you're certain that's not backing out any further, if it stays on the end of your wrench, ta-da! Action. So my Snap-on guy has these little, wrench, little uh, not wrenches, screwdrivers. They're mag magnetic, so it's really kind of handy. But <clears throat> they're great for picks or prying dust seals out. So you're gonna get the dust seal out of your forks. Just kind of go around and pry it up a little bit. These are pretty bad. And this is garbage. And now inside here, you're probably gonna find some hair, maybe a bird feather, a cigarette butt, who knows? It's a crapshoot. I like to use a pick to get the retention ring out. And uh, I'm gonna try and get the camera right in here real close. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see, there's like a little bump in the ring right there. Let's see, put it in the light. Right there, that bump. Find the end of the ring and get your pick in there and you can kind of push away from the wall. See like that? And you just pull the ring right out. Dunzo. So now if you're used to using both hands to whack off, this is an easy part for you. Take the whole thing like that. That's okay. It's all going to pop out. And now you've just pulled out the actual oil seal. I'm absolutely not trying to be clean with this whole thing either. Just trying to make a total mess because you know what? When you do this for the first time, it's going to be a fucking disaster. You're going to get this crap everywhere. So don't wear nice clothes. If you just went to church, change your damn clothes. So here we've got our fork damper now with a little dog hair on it. A little treat for my puppy. And your spring with one of my hairs, I think. Put these aside because they are filthy. So before I ended that last little process, I forgot to tell you there's an oil lock piece in the bottom of your, um, your fork blower. So <clears throat> you're going to pull this out. 
It's going to have a hole at one end and a big hole at the other end. It goes in your forks like that. <clears throat> Pretty simple. So now you can see I've cleaned this off. You can observe the fine Corinthian aluminum and uh, wonderful covering they've done on this. It uh, preserves that Corinthian aluminum's um, value for years. That's why you find all those wonderful 70s aluminum forks that just look so great now. So your next step is going to be cleaning everything up <clears throat> and removing the bushing off your actual fork. So you can take your oil seal, which is this one's complete crap and toast garbage. Take this guy off, set that aside. It's going to be a little copper ring down here. All you got to do is get a screwdriver, pry it open, and it'll pop off. Just like that. And that's also garbage. So I cleaned the inside of this part out, <clears throat> cleaned the outside off, made sure it's dry. You don't want any water in there. You can wipe this all down. Now, you'll see another seal right here. Oh, what's this? There's another one. So you'll notice a difference. This one's a, uh, I'll uncover all the crustacean oil off of it. Ugh. This one's copper and narrow. That one, you don't see any copper, and it's much wider. Big difference there. So when you reassemble, you'll want to pay attention to that. So take this one off. Same process to be done. A little screwdriver in there. Put it in just in the crack, turn it sideways. It'll open up that enough to be able to get it off. In this case, this one's a little tight. You might need a bigger screwdriver. It's not the screwdriver you're using it. It's the bushing you're hammering with, right? There we go. <clears throat> Make sure this is all cleaned off. Gentlemen, I'm sure you know how to polish a tube. So now you've got all these disgusting oily parts and you want to get all that oil, old oil off of them. So you just get some paper towels, not the household kind. They just they leave little fibers everywhere and they ball up. Just get these shop towels and get them at pretty much any auto store or Walmart. Just wipe everything down real good. You're not, I'm not going to use the spacer, so I'm not going to need it, but just for your edification, wiped off. If you're going to use your fork, uh, stock fork length or your stock forks again, you will need to keep that. I don't need this anymore. The spring, same story. Wipe it all down. Get your paper towel in there. Clean it off real good. Make it shine like top of the Chrysler building. There you go. <clears throat> I'm not going to use this ring and I'm not going to be using this uh, washer anymore. So these can be set aside as well. You've got a really gross spring here too. Um, if you've been riding a long time, the bike's really old, you may want to step up to progressive springs, um, depending on your riding style, or if you just want to try them out. Um, they're really nice. They improve the suspension a bit. Uh, Honda bikes are typically pretty mushy in the front end, but I will say I kind of prefer it. Um, I've ridden bikes with a lot more stiff front ends and <clears throat> I mean there are times when a stiff front end is important, yes, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, if you're riding a cruiser or a chopper, you know, little bits of comfort kind of help and having a soft front end is a good thing in this case. Not so much with the ladies. So clean that off. All these steps are going to be repeated on both forks. So I'm just going to go through one, that way you guys see everything that needs to happen. So here's the little bolt we pulled out of the bottom of the forks. It comes with a copper washer, that's toast, throw it away. In the fork seal and bushing kits, you will get a new little washer. That's going to go on your bolt. Set that guy aside. Remember these? Came from the top of the forks. It's got an O-ring. You will want to replace that. Just get a little pick here, pull it right out. Easy peasy Japanesey. That's garbage, or you can save it for a cock ring, whatever you want. New O-ring right there. Slide that back on. Good to go. Next step. Okay. So remember those garbage uh, bushings we took off? These are the brand new ones. So we're going to put the tiny one on first, big one on second. Get our screwdriver. Get that little break right there. 
put the screwdriver in it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Turn the screwdriver sideways if need be, and it'll scooch right up. There you go. It's going to slide around a little bit. There's the, uh, the taller one. Same thing, find that little split, if you can see that right there. It's pretty delicate, so you don't really have to manhandle them too much. They'll pop right in. There you go. Look at that. Let's take your little fork oil lock piece. Doo -doo -doo. Drop that in there. It's going to sit right in the center. I doubt you can see in there, but uh, there's a little spot in the center. You can see the fork oil lock piece sitting right down there in the bottom. Shazam. Next thing you're going to do is get your little spring, put it over your fork piston, and put this into the fork tube. Make sure that stays on there. Yep. It's going to come out the other end. We'll swap this over so you guys can see it. Just like that. So now we're going to get our fork oil lock piece onto the end of the fork piston and get it into this piece here. I hate my job. <laughs> it's going to come all the way down to the end. We're going to put this back in the vise. Next thing you're going to do is take that uh, fork removal tool, get that up inside your fork, and now you're going to need some extensions. Well, I am at least because I have six over forks on here. Um, we're going to take our 24 millimeter socket, get it on the end here, and thread this bad boy up in there. Think I got it. A little shorter on this extension. Don't need that much. Okay. Now, the little bolt we had, this little guy. This is gonna get some Loctite. Action! So the Honda service manual says, apply like a thread locking agent. It does not specify what, although I'm sure they'd want me to use some sort of Honda brand like Honda Lock 2000 or something like that. Um, I use the um, Permatex, it's a red thread locker gel. It's pretty easy to use, works pretty well. Just get a little bit on your threads there. It's like a glue stick. You just kind of turn it, it comes out. It's amazing. Don't eat it though, please. Put this back on our six millimeter Allen wrench, T-handle wrench here. And if you're a plate operation, you'll know exactly how this works. It's a little bit touchy. Get that in the hole there. So I'm gonna hold my wrench down at this end. Start turning that T-handle. Hopefully I've got everything lined up. If not, I'll find out in a moment. Nope, we're in, we're good. So, this is very important. There are torque values that you will want to pay attention to. And you're gonna to wanna to get a torque wrench with an Allen on it and torque these down at the right amount of pressure. So do that. So now you're going to need to install your fork tube bushing. Pretty easy, just set it up here at the bottom, get your screwdriver, turn it sideways, and scooch it on there. Boop! Easy. So now what we need to do is basically press all those seals into the lower part of the fork. Um, you can use a uh, fork seal uh, slider. Uh, they are super fancy and nice looking and they clamp over this and you slide everything in. Most of you guys are probably not going to want to spend 40, 50 bucks and buy one of those. So the easy way out is to use some pieces from Home Depot. Piece of cake. I think this is like a total of $2. And some two inch black PVC. Take your old oil seal, the old crappy one <clears throat> that you're not using anymore. Slide that over your fork and this is going to protect your new seals. Push that guy down. You can always pull this one out, so don't worry about that. Take this smaller piece here, slide it on the fork, put the other piece on, 
And now you're going to get your black PVC, put your fork upright, and you're going to pound these guys in. Right. So once you press all the guts back into here, you're going to use your stopper ring, toss it over the top, play a little ring toss with yourself. And you want to start at one side and push it into that groove in there. Press it down side, get your little tiny screwdriver, a pick, whatever you got. And it basically just pops right into place. You can see that silver ring in there. You see that okay? Cool. Next is going to be your dust seal, which is this guy. Same thing as before, you're going to use a little bit of fork oil to lubricate it before you slam it in there. Of course, don't spit on it. Don't put it in dry. There we go. Nice and slippery. Put it over the top of your fork. This one's a little easier to pop in. You just kind of push it down with your hands. They usually go right in pretty easy. If you need to, you can get the PVC again and kind of tap it in. And you're all sealed up. Next thing to do is put some fork fluid in this biatch. Next thing you're going to want to do is fill this up with some fork fluid. So making sure this is pressed all the way down, <clears throat> you're going to want to fill your fork fluid up 4.9 inches from the top here. So you can use a ruler, you can use a turkey baster to pull fluid out if you go too far, but I have a little wire here, just a piece of brass wire that is 4.9 inches. So I go real slow, I look down the tube, I watch where I'm going, I watch how much fluid I'm putting in there until it just touches the bottom of that brass, this brass wire. So, we're gonna take our fork fluid here, and fill her up. I'm actually gonna put a flashlight on this so I can keep a close eye on it. And if you want, you can take that piece of wire you measured out, fold it over the top so it just stays there. Flashlight in here. This is way better looking than that black Hershey's chocolate syrup crap we dumped out earlier. <laughs> oh yeah, it even smells good. That is what's up. Okay, getting close to the wire here, literally. So I want to make sure this is pretty level or at least close to it. <clears throat> yep. Um. Boop, just touch the wire. Now, you're gonna have to keep filling this. I wanna make sure the fluid gets all through there, so I'm gonna open your fork up a little bit like that. You're going to pump it a few times, real slow. Is this not the most sensual thing you've seen today? It's about the most sensual thing I've done today, aside from have breakfast. Breakfast is always sexy. Let's check our fluid level. And we are a few inches below 4.9, so keep filling her up. There we are. Now, if you've gone too far, you fill up too much, just get a turkey baster. Don't use the one in your kitchen. That's not a good idea. This stuff is not good for you to eat. Um, but you can pull that out. You can use a little syringe, whatever you got. Dump it out if you want. <clears throat> it's a lot cleaner if you just suck some out. But if you're careful and you take your time, you use a little gauge like this, you won't have to make a mess. On to the next step. Okay, so now you're gonna put your springs in. The, see how it's all compressed down here? This side goes down first. Put that guy in. Ooh, all greasy. And you're gonna put your little spacer in, little washer. And this is actually the fork spacer. 
Now you can see it sticks out. That's because you got to compress it first to get the fork cap on. So I'm going to do that next. So you've got your spacer sticking out here. What you're going to do is you're going to unload these, hold the bottom of the fork, pull up. It's going to hide itself in there. Take your fork cap, making sure you've used the new seal. Very important. And when you tighten this down completely, you're going to want to make sure that you follow the service manual's torque specifications. Get a torque wrench. They're pretty damn cheap at Harbor Freight. Put next to a snap-on wrench, they're pretty darn accurate. I mean, within less than a half pound. So <clears throat> you don't have to get crazy special material, but I will stress that having a torque wrench is really important. So you don't strip things out, you don't over-tighten, you don't under-tighten. It's a machine that you're putting your life in its hands, basically. So spend the extra 20, 30 bucks, get a torque wrench. Next step bikes, every hole should be real loose. I always have to check for that before. Start Do you want to go this things. way? Yeah. All right. You can get it in. There we should go. be okay. That's there. Yeah. Lift the bike up a little higher. Give me a second. A little higher. Keep going. Keep going. Push right there. That's perfect. Right there. Make sure you don't get my friend in this because he's a doctor and he's really not supposed to be working on motorcycles. He doesn't have a license for it. Plus, I'm wearing an affliction shirt. That's really embarrassing. Dude, that's that's worse. <laughs> that's worse. Fuck getting your license revoked. Wearing an affliction <laughs> shirt. Ooh, wow. God forbid you have clothing. <laughs> All right. Now let's uh, do the other side. Okay. We're going to put the uh, forks up through the tree, bottom tree here. Hey, let me tip it over towards you a little farther. Like that? There you go. Mmm, mmm, slide it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. All the way. Mm -hmm. I feel like some penetration today. <laughs> that feel good right there? Yeah. It's, it's, it feels good right there. Right, right there. Don't move. Don't move. Don't stop. <laughs> Don't ever have fun when you work. If you do, that's horse shit. So once you put the forks in, I like to tighten the bottom clamp so they don't really go anywhere. You can tighten the top clamp now. <clears throat> um, a little easier if you get the wheel on first, then kind of set the height of these and make sure your fork caps are tight as well at the same time. So now we're going to actually move to putting the wheel back in, which is really simple. So I've taken all the old grease off the axle, and I really like to use uh, some Russian horse lube, which provides the most excellent lubricitous qualities you can find on the planet Earth. Unfortunately, you have to buy it in a 55-gallon drum, so it's a little costly, but I managed to come up with a little tiny tub here. I'm just going to put a nice thin film all over this axle so it slides in. Look at that. It's almost lubricating itself. <laughs> there we go. All right. <clears throat> Settle our axle aside here. Grab the wheel. And our wheel's going to go right up in the center, obviously. And we might want to put the... Uh, the disc on the right side. There we go. Slide that down in there. Now, if you remember, we uh, use a zip tie. Hold everything together so our spacers don't fall all over the damn shop. <clears throat> so make sure both your forks, the uh, fender mounts are facing the inside. <clears throat> you can cut the zip tie here. You grab some dikes. I know you're probably laughing, I said dykes, but uh, dykes stands for diagonal cutters, not some form of lesbian. Just watch me get all sorts of hate comments about that one. It's a great time to be alive, isn't it? So now I put some extended forks on, I've got a little distance issue here, you can see. So I'm gonna need to raise the bike up to match the axle height. Approximately. Yeah, we can 
you come down, Tad? All right, a little more. This is a really fun part of the process. Just obviously I'm having just the greatest time lining up a wheel with a fork. Truth be told, none of this is shitty. Like, you're working on your own motorcycle. So, how bad could it be, you know? So we're gonna use our newly horse lubed axle. Slide this puppy on in here. Ooh, see how smooth that went in? Mmm. All right. Match the axle up with the hole on the other side of the fork, the other fork actually. And use my handy dandy old screwdriver. There we go. That's it. Now we're gonna tighten these pinch bolts and take her for a ride. 